Hey guys, it's uh, Professor Nick Sensky, UNC Charlotte. Uh, this is part four of the lecture two tutorials, and uh, we're talking about distributing geometry. And uh, in the other parts of these tutorials, I talked about how if you have points, uh, you can distribute geometry uh, using those points as a starting point for that uh, grasshopper object, or um, as, a, as a starting plane. You could also uh, orient geometry that you created uh, to those points or planes. And so it's really about, uh, you know, for today, making points. Uh, and we just looked at a way of taking surfaces and curves and, you know, dividing them up. Um, another way to make points is simply to make points. And the way to do that is uh, with a point um, object. You can go into points, and there's a construction called point XYZ. <clears throat> and what this does is it takes an X coordinate, a Y coordinate, and a Z coordinate, uh, basically a number and we'll output uh, a point in space. And right now it's zero, zero, zero. It's at the origin, okay? And uh, just to demonstrate, you know, generally how this works, um, I'm gonna make a number slider from zero to 100 and plug it into the uh, X parameter. And if I vary that, you can see that, whoa, my point moves quite a bit. <clears throat> so again, I'm changing the X coordinate to 23 and then the point is at 23, 0, 0, okay? And, uh, you know, you could, you could certainly plug this into, you know, the Z coordinate to get a point that moves up and down, okay? So you can make a, a, a point. But um, what I want to show you actually is, is a different way of, of, uh, of making points in, um, in a row or in a series, uh, different kinds of distributions of points. And then we can use those to distribute our geometry. And to do that, we're going to look at two tools. Uh, and, and one of them is called a uh, series. And a series is basically a series of numbers. And what it looks like is uh, it starts off with the first number in the series, which in this case is 0. And then you give it a step size. So this is like the increment in our processing loop. OK, so like x plus plus, uh, x plus 10, you know, y plus 20. That's the increment. And then lastly is, is a number of values. And this could be like our count that we use in processing. So how many things do you want? So starting at zero and adding one for each step, you have 10 steps. It's going to give you a series of numbers from zero to nine. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And these are just numbers. This is very important because we can use numbers for lots of things, right? We have a number slider. You know, we can change a parameter by setting a number, but we can also give it a list of numbers. And in Grasshopper, when you give a component a list, you create multiple outputs. And so if we take the series numbers and plug it into X, we get a series of points at, you know, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, and so forth. Okay. Now I can change these parametrically. So I can change, you know, the first number in the series. So I can actually shift that x coordinate. So now it starts at 4. And uh, then it you know, becomes 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If I make another parameter slider, <clears throat> I could, and I make it a whole number, I could change the number of steps that I have. So here I have 4, and I can keep adding some. And then I can also change the, uh, the spacing between them, which is the, uh, the n. So what that looks like is something like this. So I can I can I can shift these. This is kind of like my margin. Okay, I can uh, change the spacing between them. So again, this is the increment, and I can change the number of things. I have three. So lots of different options for spacing things if you use the uh, the series component. Okay, and that's you know really kind of generic right now. We're just doing it uh, in a simple row, uh, but it's going to get a lot more interesting when you apply this to things like transforms. Okay, so a series is if you if you have a starting number and you want a certain number of things with a certain space between them. Okay, but you're not sure where that's going to end. Uh, that's a good way to find out. That's a good way to make that parametric. Okay, I'm going to delete the series component, and I'm going to add one called range. <clears throat> and range is for when you have a beginning number and an end number, and you want a certain number of things, uh, you want to divide that range by a certain number. So it takes a domain, and this is a range from a starting number to an ending number, and then a number of steps, okay? So um, we haven't looked at uh, domain yet. This actually wants a domain type, 
Okay, if you look at that, uh, it doesn't want a number, it wants a domain uh, range. Um, so we can add a domain component. The domain component takes a starting number, and it's just a number, and then an end number, and then you get a domain. So we'll just take these sliders again. These are just sliders that go you know, to 100. So I'm gonna take that, and that's my starting number. Take the second one, that's my ending number. Okay, so my domain <clears throat> in this case is from well, it's, you know, roughly four to 52. And I get my domain and I plug this in. And then a uh, number of steps, <clears throat> I'm gonna make that, plug this one in so I have four steps, you know, 30 steps. <clears throat> and I get a range of numbers, okay, that's been divided. If I plug that number into my X again, you can see that, so my range, starting number, you know, ending number, number of steps. So this is really useful for architects, right? If you want to, if you want to give things an even spacing, you want them to start at a certain point, you know, end at a certain point, and you can can really do a lot of exploration of it. Okay, so that you know, those are two methods for explicitly creating points uh, using uh, the series component and the range component. And keep an eye out for those components again. We're going to be looking at them further, but just keep in your head, you know, what kind of numbers those things generate. We can imagine these as processing loops, right? This might be our starting condition. This might be our end of test condition, okay? And this might be our count. And uh, so anyway, uh, if you if you think of these as like looping structures, I think it might help you understand a little bit better. So again, series and range, and uh, generating numbers. And uh, we'll um, take this all back together again and look at some different ways of um, distributing geometry in um, our PowerPoint slideshow.